So this is a photo of Craig Hutto. Um, Craig's been an amputee for about eight years now, ever since he went fishing with his brother off the coast of Florida. Um, during that vacation, Craig was attacked by a bull shark and his brother began to pull him back to shore. Um, but for some reason, in this case, the shark resisted uh, and left its jaw clenched around Craig's leg. By the time Craig was out of the water, the damage that had been done to his leg was irreparable. Hours later, doctors were forced to remove his right leg several inches above his knee. Now, most amputees don't have quite such a dramatic story, but their loss arguably is just as significant. Losing a leg above the knee has a serious impact on a person's mobility, their stability, and their psyche. Many of the problems faced by amputees stem from the fact that current prosthetic limbs are poor substitutes for the biological limb. You see, the state of the art in prosthetics today are still passive. What this means is that these legs can't move on their own. All they can do is resist or store energy that you provide. All you have to do is think about climbing a staircase to remember that your knees and your ankles need to be able to provide their own energy. Just imagine lifting yourself up over a step with only energy from your hip. Fortunately, in the last five to 10 years, there have been significant advances in motor technology, battery technology, and microcontrollers. It's now feasible to build a prosthetic leg that has power and is approximately the same size and weight as a human leg. My research focuses on how to design such a leg with a particular emphasis on how that leg is controlled. You see, most lower limb activities require what's known as a low cognitive burden. All this really means is that you don't have to think very hard in order to know how to walk or go up or down stairs or run. And this is good news because it means that a computer embedded in a prosthetic leg has a reasonable chance of figuring out what a person is trying to do without being directly connected to that person's brain. My research has shown that a computer in a prosthetic leg can help a person walk at different speeds, go up and down slopes and stairs, stand, sit, and even ride a bicycle. All this is accomplished without any interface to the brain or the muscles, which makes the technology significantly less invasive and more reliable. Craig works on campus, and if you ever run into him, I hope you get a chance to ask him about what it's like using the robotic leg. He's pretty laid back, and he's not going to tell you that it's changed his life, you know, and he's not going to tell you that it feels like walking before his amputation. But I hope he does tell you some of the things he's told me as I've had a chance to work with him, like how walking up a hill feels almost the same as walking on level ground, or how when he puts his weight on it, he no longer has to worry about the knee buckling. See, innovation isn't always as sudden or as bold as we like to think. It happens incrementally. You might even say, one step at a time. Thank you.